Hey, how are we doing? It's Ben here from EQL Networks and Security. And today we were taking a look at the ping command and how it can be used to test and troubleshoot devices in your own home network. So if you're new to this channel and like what you see here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on our socials to stay up to date with the latest network tips, news and reviews designed to save you time. At EQL, we're always here to help and support your business. So now let's get right into this. The ping command is a command line utility built into your operating system. It operates by sending echo requests and echo reply messages via the ICMP or Internet Control Message Protocol. So what does this all basically mean? Basically, your PC sends a message out to the device and waits back to hear from that device that the message has been received. This is a useful way to troubleshoot devices on the network if for whatever reason they are not functioning properly. For example, you may have a CCTV camera on your network that isn't working or connecting. Using the ping command, we can do a ping test to help determine whether the issue is associated with your uh, local area network or if there's some other problems causing the camera to not function properly. So what could be wrong with that camera? I guess the camera may not be receiving enough power for one. I guess cables are not connected properly or aren't terminated properly. The camera could be incorrectly addressed or not on the IP ad right IP address range and the camera just might be faulty. So a ping test essentially allows us to isolate, you know, the potential issues causing problems on uh, problems to devices on the network. To use the ping command, you must first open command prompt. Now, you need to ensure that the computer you're on is on the same subnet range as the device you're having issues with. For example, having your computer on an IP address of 10.0.0.100 with a subnet of 255.255.255.0, then your camera should also be on that same range of, for example, 10.0.0.150 and a subnet of 255.255.255.0, for example. If you don't know how to get your computer onto the right IP address range, we'll do another video showing you just exactly how you do that. So if the camera wasn't on a different, if well, basically if the camera was in a different subnet range, you won't be able to ping that camera. So once you've established that you're on the right range, open your start menu for a Windows device, type CMD and the command prompt program should appear. And if you're on a Mac, you simply search for terminal. So once you're there, click on it, hit enter to open it. And then once open, type in ping followed by a space and the IP address of the device on your network. Then press enter. Once done, a ping request will be sent to the device with the matching IP address that you've typed in. Now you should see new lines of information appear. So let's go through them to see what they all mean. On the first line, we can see the IP address of the device and the size of the packets that were sent. Packets are simply units of data used to communicate between different network devices. The following four lines show a reply from each of the individual four packets, along with the time it took for the response to be achieved or received. Ideally, you're looking for a time of like one to two milliseconds. If you start seeing this time increase to greater than 500 milliseconds, you probably find the network is congested, meaning you'll get a laggy picture or drop frames. Now, TTTL at the end of the line stands for time to live. This refers to the amount of time that passes before the packet is discarded. And then towards the bottom of the results is basically a summary of the packets that were sent, received or lost during the transmission. The summary also depicts the minimum and maximum and average response times. Another thing is if you want to continuously monitor that device, add a hyphen T to the end. This will continually ping the device until you cancel it. Overall, in this case, it basically shows the result of this device. It's working flawlessly on our network. So a device that isn't performing uh, very well may have packet lots during transmission or may not even have packets transfer at all. An example to simulate a poor connection is if we disconnect the cable, you'll start to see packets loss, uh, meaning there is no communication between the computer and device. Plug it back in and you'll see the connection reestablish. As initially stated earlier, we can use this information to help diagnose the problem that is occurring. If you don't get any reply back from the ping, it's a process of elimination. So let's see how this can be used. If you basically have a, a camera and the computer on the same range, then you can start looking at, say, if the camera is powered. Most cameras are PoE, so it could lead to either a faulty termination or possibly the cable. On the other hand, if you do manage to ping the camera, but the picture is you know, not stable or laggy, it could mean there is an issue with the switch or there is a network 
basically your network congestion. So possibly also the cable run could be exceeding the 100 meter rule. Overall, it's a great basic free tool that can help you diagnose problems and give you a place to start looking. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment sections below. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on our socials to stay up to date with the latest network tips, news and reviews designed to save you time. At EQL, we're always here to help and support your business.